today's look. Same as last week, however, hat, a jaunty angle, more like Peaky Blinders. I'm not Peaky Blinders, by the way. Blinky Blimey. Ben's been a busy bloke this week. He's had to cut away because I've changed my engine. I've changed the engine because I originally had a Beta Marine and I've changed it to a Barris because I couldn't get a Beta Marine. The lead in time for getting a Beta Marine is just beyond the build of the boat engine. So I've changed it to a Barris Shire 50 horsepower. But to do that, we've had to cut off, grind out, cut away the engine mounts and, and remake the engine mounts to make that engine fit because it's a bit higher than the Beta Marine. And um, so Ben had to cut away the engine mounts and some new mounts have got to be welded on. The fit out pontoon is a bespoke boat builder. The three strap lines are originate, innovate and facilitate. So they originate the build and they originate through the design of what's going to go on and, and if they want, if the customer wants something different, then Mark is prepared to do something different. So that's the, the innovate and then they facilitate that design and the innovation and they make it all happen but it is about what the customer wants. And, and when you're in business, it's about what the customer wants. And sometimes people want some different ideas and I'm absolutely all for that. And I've benefited because all those innovation of ideas and the innovation from, from Mark's startup to where we are now, I've benefited from some of those things that they continue try, trying to improve. So here's a snapshot. Boaty trivia, starboard side, was once known as the steerboard side because, well, back in the Viking days, the boat used to be steered from the right side, and when they aligned themselves to port, they aligned themselves to port because they didn't want to ruin the steering side on the boat. Now, for some reason, it seems painfully obvious that the boat needs to be steered from the centre point of the boat but that wasn't always the case so that was known as the steerboard side starboard and also the portholes because I've got portholes and the portholes is a was well that's where the guns used to stick out of nothing to do with port being left the portholes were just holes port p-o-r-t-e french word for opening or door That hole there is a hole for the water pump, I think, for the for the shower. And that little hole there, that little thing is for my veg cupboard. Veg and fruit. But things have gone on well on the boat this week. The ceiling's up and just this strip in the middle is where all the lights are going. And then what else? Oh! Ben's down the bottom of the boat doing some plumbing. He's plumbing in the water tank 
and from the water tank there's going to be a water pump close by by Jingo it's, it's coming on quite well they've got me on tea making duties ah, ah. these are nice aren't they the drawers under the bed they've gone in I made them all a cake I made a rice crispy cake who takes tea and who takes coffee coffee one sugar <laughs> Coffee only. Whoa, 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 whoa. Coffee one? What's that one? Coffee only. No milk, no nothing. Coffee. Black? Yes. Right? That one there. Them two are without milk. Those two are just tea. Tea okay. bags, no, no sugar. There's sugar. How many? One, one. Gordon Bennett? Now there's a term that's not used often these days. Gordon Bennett was a term when I was a young boy. My mum used to say, Gordon Bennett, what are you doing? Gordon Bennett was a fella who was born in 1795 or something along those lines. And he, he came from Banffshire in, in Scotland. And then he moved across to the US of A and uh, he was a very good journalist and he started off the New York Herald in New York clearly and um, so uh, that was that was Gordon Bennett but then he had a boy who he also called Gordon Bennett Jr and it's Gordon Bennett Jr that created the term Gordon Bennett because he was a, he was more flamboyant than his dad he used to be good at spending the, the family money. A bit of a fast flash, flash fella. He had a fast flash lifestyle. And he took over the New York Herald in 1866. Now, one of his correspondents was a fella called Henry Morton Stanley. I don't know if Morton was his middle name and Stanley was the last name or whether it was Morton Stanley double barreled so it might have been Henry Two Dads Morton Stanley and he said to Morton Stanley this is Gordon Bennett said to Morton Stanley go and find Livingstone you can imagine that can't you well where do you want me to find him well, he's in Africa somewhere go and find him Henry Two Dads from New York gets on a boat and says to the fellow on the boat, he says, oh, I need to get to Africa. Well, that'll be three months, mate. Quite where the Australian come from, I don't know. However, he gets on a boat and docks in Africa. Now, Africa's not a small place. How on earth do you find a fella called David Livingstone? And then you, how do you start? You ask someone, have you heard of um, 
David Livingstone. And the fella goes, do you mean Dr. David Livingstone? Yeah, that's right. No, never heard of him, mate. I, can't, I wonder if there's any of those wind up merchants back in the, the late, or the 1800s, as there would be now. But Henry Two Dance found David Livingstone on the shores of a lake called Tanganyika. Whatever that's called, it's, it's, on, it's on the screen. And here's the line. When he goes up to Livingstone and says, Dr. Livingstone, I presume. And that was said by Henry Morton Stanley, who worked for a fella called oh, Golden Bennett. We don't use it anymore. The words Kinell comes to mind. Where <laughs> P's and Q's. Now, where do P's and Q's come from? Well, it could be said that the difference between P's and Q's was in the in the publicans. Mind your P's and mind your Q's. Pints, P's, quarts, Q's. Don't get them mixed up. Or it could have been in the printing game. Back in the day, you had typesetters that they used to turn the letters upside down and back to front to get the paper printed so it come on the right way round. My dad, when he did his apprenticeship, was a was one of those typesetters. Mind your P's and Q's, because they look very similar when you're turning them upside down the wrong way round and all that sort of stuff. I kind of think that's where P's and Q's have come from. Anyway, so I'm not boring the ears of a donkey, more about the boat. Move the camera slightly, let's move that up so I can talk to you. There we go. Sat on the bed, the plumbing's gone in. So, I found out a little bit about the plumbing. There's an awful lot of piping. I don't know how many meters. The boat's 50 foot. Interior length, one, two, three, four. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of feet of piping. But what was interesting is the amount of um, clips that are placed in. And the clips are placed in every 300 mils or 30 centimeters. Now, I, the reason for that is because the, the pipe has come on a big reel and it's, it's, it's bendy and, and basically this all keeps everything absolutely rock solid, steady, straight still it's not in time gonna bow out because because those those clips just to make sure that everything is not going to move it's steady it's every 300 millimeters and there's a system of work because let's have a look at the diagram so I don't forget it the top pipe 
The top pipe is the flow pipe, so from the hot water tank, the clorifier, somehow or other in there, it forces water, some by a pump I would have thought, that goes along the top pipe, goes to all the radiators and flows through and then turns round at the end and then comes back, forces itself back to the chlorifier that then keeps continually pumps the water to make the central heating work. So those are the two top thick water pipes. The bottom two pipes are the water that goes into the shower. And the interior one, the inside of the two, well that's the cold water, fed by fed by the water tank behind me and there's a pump going to be fitted today and that's that's in that cupboard when it's fitted so that's the cold water pump and the other outside small white water pipe comes from the chlorifier hot water tank and that's the hot water that feeds the shower and the sink in the bathroom at a jaunty angle. I've learned an awful lot about boat building since I've been here. And the more I learn, the more it impresses me. So it does, it's not just this place, it's those people doing the fit out of them by themselves, you know, the, the DIY fitter outers, great job. You know, when you consider to build a boat, you need to be a, a car mechanic, because it's got, it's got an engine, you need to be a plumber, and you need to be a wardrobe fitter, a, you know, a woodworky type bloke. You need to be a painter. You need to be an electrician. There's so much that goes into building the interior fit of a boat. Fascinating stuff. Really, honest to God. Uh, the water pumps inside, inside the cupboard. So it's easy to get at. If something was to go wrong with that water pump, there's going to be a little tray with an alarm fitted underneath it. So if, and I do know if and when, and when is the key, the key point here, when, the, when that water pump breaks, it will drip onto the tray, tray will alarm, and I know I have to change that water pump. And um, at that point, At that point there, that's going to be underneath the set of steps that leads me out to the well deck. So that's all going to be hidden quite nicely. Uh, what else? So the boat's, the boat's moved on. It's, it's, um, it's come along quite nicely. You know, the roof panels are up. The, the lights have got to go in, in that centre panel. The furniture's being moved onto the boat. I've noticed there's no, I've noticed there's no, no light switches. Oh. I bought myself one of those mattresses last week. Simba seemed to be on the telly quite a lot. I've gone for Emma. And the reason why I've gone for Emma? 50% off. Gift. There's another week done. And I'm glad I'm watching the project through design to, to end state because I understand how all the, the plumbing works. I understand how, well I don't really understand how the electric works, I'm not bright enough for that, but I kind of know where the fixtures and fittings are. And um, all, the, all the plugs and I get all that stuff, the light switches, there's a plan. <laughs> um, Water pumps, the water tank which is stitch welded on the inside to make sure that it doesn't pop and, and, and bulge when the amount of water that goes in there, all of that stuff. To me, that's innovation and I think it's great. I'm not sure, perhaps you could tell me if anybody else, if any other organisation does that stitch welding on the water tanks but that to me that's great but once again thanks for watching thanks for subscribing thanks for liking and i'll speak to you next week <laughs> <laughs>